This is the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. It's a microcontroller, so it's not like the bigger Raspberry Pis that run Linux, but it can still do a lot. It has a new chip, the RP2350, that takes everything that was good about the RP2040 on the original Pico and makes it better. Three PIOs instead of two, 150 megahertz instead of 133. ARM and RISC-V cores. There's a lot to get through, and obviously my desk is a little full right now. You'll have to pardon me. I've been building a Positron, and it's pretty much consumed this entire desk. So let's move over to the electronics workbench. Over here, I have my Pico 2 running some demo code, and it's hooked up to my digital multimeter. I've been testing its power consumption, and good news. Even though the new chip is faster and has more features, it actually uses less power than RP2040, meaning if you run one of these things off a battery, it'll last longer. I'll talk more about power later, but first, here's the specs. The layout is nearly identical. It has the same castellated edges, so you can solder the board down onto your project. The top has the same boot select button, micro USB port, and LED. And the chip is the same size and pinout. The bottom is identical, except there's one extra test pad in the middle of the board. So the Pico 2 is a drop-in replacement, and the RP2350 chip on top is also a drop-in replacement for the RP2040. But now we'll get to the differences, and they're all hidden away inside here. This chip has a faster base clock, 150 megahertz, and I haven't tested overclocking it yet, but it should be easy to do that, and I know that Tom's Hardware already has an article up with some of those results. A headline feature of the Pico was the built-in PIO, or programmable I.O. PIO lets you build your own communication interfaces using GPIO pins, and people do wild things with it, like Clem from Element 14 built a custom video card. The Pico had two PIO blocks, and the Pico 2 adds another one, so now there are 12 state machines available to programmers. The Pico had two ARM Cortex-M0 cores, and the Pico 2 upgrades to two Cortex-M33. And it adds on two Hazard 3 RISC-V cores. More on how that works in a bit. The Pico had 264 kibibytes of SRAM, and the Pico 2 doubles that to 520. The Pico consumed around 100 milliwatts at idle, and the Pico 2 only about 80. The RP2040 came in one package size with four ADCs and 30 total GPIO pins. The RP2350 comes in two package sizes, and the bigger one has 48 GPIO pins. And there are a lot of new things like built-in flash options and OTP storage that I honestly can't get into here, but the fact is Raspberry Pis improved every aspect of their first chip, which is still very popular, and they solved some of the most annoying problems people had with it. And having the same form factor is huge, because if you had something that used a Pico, you can just swap on a Pico 2 once the software's updated for a quick upgrade. And there are thousands of projects out there that already made good use of RP2040. Like, I was just in Cracker Barrel last week with my family, and I noticed these little tiny arcade games from a company called Super Impulse. It looks like this thing came out in like 2018, well before the Pico came out, so it's not using the RP2040. There's some other microcontroller hiding under this blob of epoxy. But take the Pico Boy V2. I was actually contacted by Halo Spaceboy like a week ago, and he asked if I'd like to take a look at it. This is built with the RP2040, and it already has micro Python ports of classic games like Breakout, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, and Flappy Bird. Okay, well, maybe that last one isn't quite a classic yet. But this is just one of the projects I've seen that becomes so much easier to design and build for an individual with the Pico. There's a mod chip for the Nintendo Switch called the PicoFly. Pimeroni makes their own gamepad called the Pico System, and of course, the Pico runs Doom <laughs> on a Lego brick. But games are one thing. Someone also built a logic analyzer, a portable serial terminal, and even a full SDR receiver called Piccolo SDR. There's even a rack mount monitor for home labs and businesses called Axe Effect, made by fellow YouTuber Craft Computing. I have one, and, well, sorry Jeff, I still haven't installed this thing. Retro enthusiasts are all over the RP2042. I've seen it used to build custom N64 flash carts, emulate a full classic Macintosh, and almost everyone with one of these old Macs has a blue SCSI V2 to emulate hard drives and CD-ROMs. Then there's the ISA Blaster and the ZX Spectrum emulator. I mean, I could go on for an hour. And that's before we get into places where you might never notice there's an RP2040 hiding unless you look really closely. Like the MNT Reform I tested earlier this year, the trackball is run on a 2040. And this Radza X4, it has a crazy combo of an Intel N100 with an RP2040 to make one of the first x86 SPCs with full GPIO support. Does that actually work? Subscribe and we'll find out together. The key is, Raspberry Pi knocked the RP2040 and the original Pico out of the park. I don't think anyone could have predicted how popular it would become. And it really introduced the world of microcontrollers to a lot of people who never got into them before. But it wasn't without its flaws. One of the main ones was power consumption. The Pico doesn't deep sleep down to the microamp range. The best I could find is around 1 milliamp. 
My own test with MicroPython shows the Pi going down to 2 milliamps. The RP2040 is way better than a full Pi running Linux, of course, but in microcontroller land, milliamps aren't impressive. Like, this ESP32 can get down to 5 microamps in deep sleep. That means battery life could be measured in months instead of days or weeks. Is the Pico 2 better than the Pico? Well, first let me compare the original Pico to the Pico 2 running a simple C program that blinks the onboard LED. The Pico runs between 20 and 22 milliamps, or about 100 milliwatts. The Pico 2 runs that same code on its faster cores at about 16 milliamps, or 80 milliwatts. So already we're seeing better power consumption when the RP2350 is running. What about sleep? My Pico got down to 2 milliamps, and the Pico 2 gets down to, well, I was having trouble getting the Pico 2 to work in sleep, but that's probably my own fault. I'm a noob at C, and working with pre-release software makes it even worse. The lowest I could get it was actually 4 milliamps, but the datasheet says it can get down to 10 microamps, which would be a huge improvement. If I can get sleep and dormant working, I'll post my measurements on my blog, and I'll put a link to it in the description. Now, I'm not a microcontroller expert. There's this guy with a Swiss accent who knows a hundred times more than I do about microcontrollers and code optimization, so definitely check out his videos, and hopefully he can get to the RP2350 soon. But the other headline feature is the inclusion of two Hazard 3 RISC-V cores. What does that mean? Well, the ARM cores on here are proprietary. Raspberry Pi pays ARM some money, ARM sends them the designs, and Raspberry Pi can use them in their chip. The RISC-V cores, those aren't really owned by anyone. They're open source, meaning Raspberry Pi can just clone this Git repository, use the designs, and that's it. No licensing, no proprietary specs. That doesn't mean the Hazard 3 cores are faster or more efficient, just that they're open. But this is cool because you can choose between ARM and RISC-V, and you can even build a universal binary that works on either set of cores. There are a couple caveats. First, you can't run all four cores at the same time. It's either or. And second, there's a lot less code out there that works low-level with RISC-V, so for most people, especially casual programmers just running MicroPython, you'll probably stick to the ARM cores. But the way Raspberry Pi is doing this, I have to wonder, is it a signal that people should start transitioning their code to RISC-V? We'll see. Espressifs had RISC-V versions of their ESP32s like this one out for a while. It's nice to see Raspberry Pi joining that party. So that's a quick overview of the Pico 2 and everything that's changed. Raspberry Pi will be launching a Pico 2 W later this year, but bottom line, the RP2350 and its bigger B variant are going to be appearing in a ton of new devices. But like with my original Pico video, I'm a beginner with microcontrollers, so check out other coverage too. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. There's no way to disable the speaker on this thing, is there? Because it, if... It, if, if <laughs> Four kilobytes of s kibibytes, four ADCs, and specs are tough. The trackball, and this Radsa X4, I don't have it in my hand. See, now I have it. When, ah, crud.